Hello, I'm Pam Hoffman, Everyday Spacer. I'm Jeff Miller, 2049 Outfitters. At Everyday Spacer, <laughs> we show regular folks how to personally and directly participate in space exploration, science, and astronomy. We're here on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 12 midnight Eastern Time, and 6 a.m. on Saturday in Germany. We're broadcasting live from Thousand Oaks, California. Thanks so much for joining us. As you can see, Jeff is here. He's still kind of sick, though. Hey, uh, did anybody catch the Perseids? And uh, you actually can still see them, even though the peak was earlier this week. The Perseids have a range from like July 17th to August 26th. So there are still some around. All right. And uh, just before we, right before we get started here, I am thinking of adding a new segment. And there's an old show that was called Stump the Expert or something. Anyway, my idea is Stump the Spacer. And the idea is to either bring up activities or jobs that will not work off-world or activities and jobs that will need that don't exist on Earth now. And uh, leave us comments if that sounds interesting to you. Tonight's topic is Hubble Asteroid Hunter. Um, we'll be back in 6.8 seconds. Okay, so Hubble Asteroid Hunter is a Zooniverse project. And here's the link. You got the link? Mm -hmm. If you would like to follow along. Then uh, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate you know, walk you through this project and do show you what some of the tasks are like. So let's see, let me get to the right place too. Uh, so when you go there, this is what you'll see. And it's like a lot of the Zooniverse projects in the way it looks and the navigation, that kind of thing. Hey, Michael, um, I'm feeling a whole lot better than I sound. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. Um, Thanks for checking in. On yeah. Jeff. It's just, um, I'm done being sick. The physical recovery is just going to take a little while. That's all. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Hi, Cliff. Um, yep. Um, yeah. You'll see me more than you'll hear me. <laughs> <coughs> Unless you count the coffee. Thanks for joining us, Cliff. Yeah. Really appreciate that. All right. So if you go to the site, this is what you find. And there's all kinds of great information, like usual. We, When we first looked at this about a week ago, it was brand new. There was nothing complete. We looked at it tonight. It's 38% complete. So if you want to get in on this project, you want to go soon. Yep. All right. And it's already got a lot of people working on it. I love that. 11,000 volunteers plus 73,000. And, and it's actually more now. So you can take a look for yourself, too. All right. And so they describe what this Hubble Asteroid Hunter is all about. And with your help, we can identify asteroids and images of the NASA ESA's Hubble Space Telescope using the information we got from previous observations. And so they need help with this work. They come to the general public to do that. All right, so you, then you see this marvelous image here. And these loops are the asteroids. All right. And uh, I got a little bit confused at first when I was pre prepping this project for you because it keeps saying asteroids. And I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. And, and what I discovered, <laughs> like, really late last night when I was wrapping up my research for you. So, all right. So they're talking asteroids. And then you go to the navigation. I, I think it's about we're going to see next. Yeah. So they talk about it. Uh, welcome to our project. The idea of the Hubble Asteroid Hunter is to identify asteroid trails in archival images from the NASA ESA Hubble Space Telescope. And there is a lot more that you can read here. And uh, this is like the outcome from the work from before. So I'm going to go through this a little bit quickly because you can absolutely go there and read all this for yourself. I don't need to read it for you. It's going to be boring if I do too. So <laughs> I'll just demonstrate what happened, what I did, what the pictures look like, and uh, tell you some more information I learned, like I said, really late last night. Oh, I just caught that really great picture again, and it's just way bigger than 
even my screen. I just love this. This is this is what Hubble does for us. It goes to you know mil billions and billions of miles, and and sees all these different. Every single one of these is a galaxy. I'm pretty sure, and if not, most of them are. And these things here indicate the asteroids. Again, you can see that for yourself on that site. So I'm going to move on. All right. So it's always archival images made by Hubble. And uh, they were looking for asteroids. And uh, there, here's, here are some of them. So these trails here, these are the asteroids in the actual images. I think the other one before, uh, that beautiful color picture, that might be sort of a composite that's been tweaked a little bit and uh, has colors, but most of these are black and white. So these are going to be used by the International Astronomical Union's Minor Planet Center to compute the orbits and update the as ephemerides of asteroids to better predict their future trajectories. Very important stuff. And they went into the team. This is a really long list, so I just grabbed them instead of screenshots. All these people are involved in this project. So when you help these, these scientists, these are the people that you're helping. I think it's awesome because a lot of these people look for, like they're from all over the world. Yeah, look at this. Amsterdam, Pittsburgh, ESA, all kinds of places. It, it's, it's, Madrid. Yeah, it's truly a, a world project, a worldwide project, and you can be part of it. All right. So that's just to give you an idea of all the folks who are involved. I do like to do a shout out for these folks because I think they're really, really wonderful um, to, to do these projects, to find out this stuff for us. All right, so uh, they talk about how you provided nearly 2 million classifications for 150,000 images from ESA Hubble Space Telescope archives. And they've used these to provide and train an automated machine like uh, this based on Google Cloud. And you may have heard about that before. Uh, so let's see. And, and it's going to be so that, you know, what you, the classifications you give trains the computer to do more work with Hubble uh, images later on. So let's see. Uh, they talk about how many recovered 2,400 trails and this was between 2002 and 2000, 2020. And I do like that they give you some nice Hubble telescope images and the trails that people were finding. All right. So then you have this wonderful thing. That it's sort of the distribution of asteroids. And we have unidentified ones, identified ones, and the ecliptic. Now, the part I, I really want to share with you is down here because... You know, we kind of knew about these 300 doing this work, though. They found out a, a 1,400 unknown ones. And it's primarily because these were so dim that, you know, land-based telescopes and people couldn't really see them. So this has really enhanced our understanding and knowledge of asteroids in the area. I, th I thought that was really cool. <laughs> like I said, wow, <laughs> that is a big jump. And they do show you in graph form as well. And there's all kinds of great links. And there's a beautiful picture. I am only going to tease you with it here because I want you to go and take a look at this. This is incredible. This picture here is just incredible. So that's teasing you. Here's yeah. another teaser. Yeah, that looks a lot like what you use as your background. It's not quite, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. All right. And so there's, um, oh yeah, they show, see, you want to go see this because it's got two asteroids crossing, crossing each other in front of a dwarf galaxy. Again, just a teaser of this image. Check it out, people. And there's some nice videos from some of these great uh, astronomers, some of these big, great scientists. I think this is wonderful. It's a really great way to participate and learn and understand and you can also you know do some of this project too all righty let's see where are we and there's yeah there's more video and there's a bunch of links if you want to check it out 
let's uh, let's get into this part because I think this is really important. You know, am I doing it right? Well, it's not going to be a, a huge issue if you feel like you've gone and hit the done button <laughs> and you're like, oh, I don't think I was done or <laughs> I didn't do it right or whatever. Don't worry about it too much. They have many people that will also look at the same image and so they'll kind of, you know, combine all of the answers <laughs> to try to get sort of the best gestalt, you know, of what there's what this image is about, what what they're seeing. So don't worry about it too much. Just go ahead and work. And the more you do, the better you get at it. So that's that's what I just wanted to emphasize that part right there. You don't have to worry too much. Just check it out, give it a try, and the more you do, the better you'll get. All right, and then there's more about the science. But, like, again, just kind of a teaser. you got to go check it out. And there's a really great picture of asteroids. <laughs> I'm going to show you the whole picture here because I think this is really cool. And I believe this was, uh, I think there was a thing about here. Uh, Emily Alectawala did that, I think. So, and they go into some of the, the risk about it. And another teaser picture. Of course, that's on Earth. That is the uh, Great Meteor Crater in Arizona. It's, uh, let's see, do I have the name here? You've actually seen that one, right? Yeah, I've been there. I've been there. Have you been there, Jeff? No, I flew over it once, but... Mm, okay, anybody from, uh, anyone who's watching, have you been to this crater in Arizona? It's big. <laughs> it is really big. All right, so here's the important part of this project. You, hit on the, you have to classify right here in the navigation bar. Remember, that's up in this upper uh, right corner. And I was a little bit surprised to see them say satellite trail. And then I figured it out. So I'll talk about that in just a little bit. And if you've seen our shows before or if you visited Zooniverse, you are very familiar with this tutorial type of uh, window here. So this kind of pops up over the task and it gives you some information on what you're doing in the task. Oh, Cliff says that Dave Renicki, um has visited uh, Meteor Crater. Oh, cool. Dave's been to Meteor Crater. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cliff, when you come back, you got to go there. Yeah. Okay. So, again, <coughs> it's very familiar. You hit the continue button and you get to the next task. But if you, if you notice, there's a slider here and there's a lot of stuff. So, I wanted to sort of show you. they This particular project is focused on... A kind of a subset of the Hubble images and uh, there's a link behind here I'll show you that in a minute if I clicked on that I would have known that right off the bat but I learned about this really late last night and I'll go into that a little bit more later but it's a very important task all right so what you're doing in this particular task is finding these satellite trails and you're gonna teach the computer again so if you click the continue button You'll move on, but I wanted to take I wanted to take the the sort of the, the details over here because there's a lot more involved. Yeah, I kept seeing the satellite trail, and I'm like, wait a minute! I thought I was going to be looking at asteroid trails. So a little bit of confusion there. Don't be confused. It's a really cool project. Still, it's just a little bit different than what I thought when I first started. And it looks like they're just trying to whack the satellite trails out of their out of their. Um, asteroid data. Well, I think it's more about training the computer to understand that that is what that is. It's a satellite trail. When they see the images in the future, they're going to be able to call, you know, they'll call it out as a satellite trail. The humans can pick them out easily. The computer needs to be trained by humans. All right, so here are the different satellite trails. Some of them are really simple like that. And then you have things like this, um, probably not a satellite trail. And we'll talk about that in a second. So they might not cover the entire image, though. And this is in that same first tutorial um, uh, slide there. Here's one that's probably a satellite trail, but it probably went behind the shadow of the Earth, for example, right? So it winked out. And some of them are, there's the one, there it is, shorter, some of the shorter rays are cosmic rays. And they're not really part of this project. And they show a bunch right here. They're just short little, I, 
I even wonder if they're like meteorites, but Hubble's above the atmosphere. So mm -hmm. it's not going to be meteorites in the sense of, you know, them causing friction in our atmosphere. So those are cosmic rays. Don't worry about those if you're going to classify these. Just focus on the satellite trails. And they can be very faint like this. And if you see this dividing line, it's just upper and lower part of this image. And I think they talked about it here. Yeah, sometimes there's a dark horizontal line separating the upper and lower part of the image. It's not a satellite and should be ignored. Because what you do is you do look at the satellite trail, which is right here. And even if it's sort of staggered like this, broken up, you are going to want to mark it. Because what you do is mark the beginning and the end of the trail. And it doesn't matter where you start. You could start on this side or this side either one because eventually they will look like just points all right so let's and if you have multiple satellites start with the brightest one so that one's the brightest you would mark that first and it'll it'll have you it'll you know it'll give you a thing are there any more satellites in the picture and then you can mark this one all right and so you keep you keep incrementing through this tutorial and oh here it is here's the if if it you know crosses that middle um, part between the upper and lower image it may appear disjointed but it is still the same satellite trail and I, I bet that's where the computer really has a problem because it absolutely isn't continuous that's certainly not to the computer all right you hit continue and you get to the next screen yeah here it is again if it's disjointed mark the beginning and end of the whole thing on both ends up here and down here and it's below it's, it's you, you've got a scroll bar here too so you can scroll through every one of these when you're when you go through the tutorial all right so yeah there's there i just um highlighted that that uh, break in the trail all right even if it's interrupted mark the beginning and end of the entire trail all right so even if it's like dashed lines like this it's still the same satellite trail that might be something that's tumbling or something where we're getting, you know, a good reflection off of it than a not so good reflection yeah. off of it as its orientation changes toward compared yeah, to Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I can totally see where the computer would have an issue with this, whereas a human being would be, oh, yes, of course, that's the same, you know, that's the same satellite trail. All right, so let's see. Are there any other pieces to, oh, yes, they can be straight or curved bright or faint, broad or narrow. And I didn't show you the whole thing in this one because they do show every every case of these combinations. So check it out. And then we hit continue, go to the next one. Uh, yeah, and that, so they'll ask you if you see another satellite trail, click yes or no, if you don't. So in this case, there's obviously two. Continue, we're almost there. Oh, and that's it. Let's go. So what I did was I tried a few of these. Here's the first one. And I didn't think so. I saw this here, but I have a feeling that's one of those like cosmic rays. So I chose no. And um, I think I, I think it was very simple. No and then done. I thought I had the images of these. Sorry. And uh, then, then they deliver the next one up. Is there a satellite in a satellite trail in this, in this image? I thought there was. I think it's right here. It's very faint. And I'll show you what, uh, I believe I have pictures of. And it's see. looking at you. <laughs> what, the little eyes here? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to highlight that uh, right now. And we'll talk about it in a minute because that's something kind of interesting in particular. So like I said, I clicked yes. The next button here uh, came to light and so you click next and then they have you mark the positions and I just generally go left to right in these doesn't really matter you can go right to left left to right whichever you prefer and then you're gonna click next again uh, let's see oh yeah here we go so that was the one I did first and when I clicked over here see it starts off as this image and it turns into that and they actually both turn into that like when you say next, because they do want you to um, 
to mention things like, is it straight? Is it curved? Is it bright? Is it faint? Is it broad or is it narrow? So how would you describe that satellite trail? So see how it went. So they just ended up being two endpoints from in the image. All right, so I picked the ones I thought were appropriate to this particular image, straight, faint, and narrow. And then I click the next button here. Uh, oh, and is there any other satellite? Here it is. Is there any other satellite in this image? Uh, and I pretty much thought that there was there was not. I mean, there's these little tiny things, but they're not really going to be a satellite. Cosmic image. Rays. Yeah, cosmic rays is what they're saying. They're, that's what they're classifying these as. All right, so let's see. I believe I have no. And then I go ahead and I click done. And it delivers the next image. So you just keep going through as many of these as you would like. You can do as little or as much. I don't think they really have an issue with, you know, however many. They do keep encouraging you at the bottom. You'll say, you should really sign in. <laughs> so I think they want people to, like, acknowledge that they're in and take credit and stuff. Uh, so I didn't see anything in here. So I clicked no, and then I clicked done. And then it just delivers the next image. Oh, and then here was a really bright one. Yeah, Jeff, you had something to say? Oh, just, yeah. You, you get a bunch of the ones that don't have any. Because probably the computer said, oh, there's something in there that might be a satellite. So you're um, so just delivering it. It was that. kind of mixed bag. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in, in, at the end here. Because I did discover something really late last night when I was finishing up my research. And uh, now I understand a little bit better why we're doing satellite trails instead of um, asteroids. All right, so as with the other Zooniverse um, projects, there is a field guide. And there's a lot more information in here about all these different things. And I definitely think you should look at them if you are interested in any of that stuff. And I just popped open uh, one of them so you can see a little bit more about what what they're talking about. This one happens to be asteroid trails. And I think this one's very, no, this is a little different, but, you know, they'll, they'll tell you a whole bunch of stuff about asteroid trails. So if you want to know more about that, it, it doesn't really um, help you with the task necessarily unless you see something like this and you're like, huh. So then you can go to the field guide and you can look around and see if there's something like that. And that actually got me pretty curious about, remember that one that we saw that looked kind of like, like Jeff said, it looked like it was looking back at you. So I did look at that and I wanted to share with you what they, they talk about. They say this is an artifact because Hubble has parts to it and it's sort of a reflection off the window of the detector. That looks oh. like a figure eight. So it's the handcuffs hanging in the <laughs> off the mirror. <laughs> uh, not going to touch that one, Jeff. <laughs> All right. And so just like other projects, they have a talk where you can go in and find other people to chat with if this is the kind of thing you like to do with forums and so forth. And they have collect as well. And this one was, since it's pretty new, they didn't have too many. You see this one, two... So there's lots and lots of beautiful images in here you can look at if you wish to. And then I thought, oh, I'll just click on this thing finally, <laughs> really late last night. And then I found out what we're doing here. So they've basically analyzed the asteroid images that the, I, I don't know if it's what they have or just the pro, you know, the part, the ones that they're going to do for now. And, you know, these things will have the open projects and closed projects as they get done and open them back up again, that kind of thing. So in this case, they wanted you to look at these satellite trails because they're going to need to, to know that these are satellite trails, not asteroid trails. So they have this uh, pre-selected sample of 10,000 images. And I guess people had tagged them before. And so they wanted to have people go through them properly 
and you know point out the end points and help train the computer so this data set will allow us to train com the computers to automatically identify satellites in the hubble images in the future and therefore to study what impact future satellite mega constellations will have on astronomical observations i thought this was important because if there's going to be a lot of you know stuff out there you're going to want to rule it out so i think ruling out things in science is just as important as you know finding in this case it would be it would have been the asteroids so if you have any questions love to hear from you on that and uh we'll chit chat a little bit if you uh, have more you want to talk about and uh i guess uh at this point we'll just kind of say um the ephemeris, what you can see in the night sky this week. Poor Jeff, I am going to give him a break. I will cover this this time. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, still recovering. And there's not a real lot going on anyway. So August 15th is the first quarter moon. This uh, moon rises around noon and it sets around midnight. On the 19th of August, Mercury and Mars are in conjunction. You want to look west around sunset for these these two objects. They're normally seen naked eye. They might be too close to the sun right now. I know Mars was uh, was tagged as being, you know, too much in the glare of the sun. So I'm thinking, well, Mercury might be too. I don't absolutely know. Mercury might be visible. Mars, remember, it comes around every couple of years, and that's when we launch things to it when it's like getting brighter and brighter, and because it's closer. And so right now it's moving farther and farther away. It's getting more and more dim. And like I, like I saw the last time we had a conjunction, it was in fact a little bit close to the sun in the glare. So also though, Pluto and the moon are in conjunction uh, and Jupiter is at opposition. So this is where um, the earth kind of moves into in between the sun and the planet. And it happens once a year for all of the superior planets mercury venus will never they'll never be in opposition because they're between us and the sun these are or for it'd be a really bad day it'll be a really bad day yeah <laughs> these are going to be planets that are beyond the earth so every year at one point in our orbit we are in we you know like mars's opposition and then mercury not mercury sorry mars jupiter how are they Saturn, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, <laughs> Pluto. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's a, an old uh, mnemonic for that. Yeah, hey, Tex. Hi, Tex. Glad you could join us. <laughs> All right, so let's see. What else do we have here? Yeah, and, and the beauty of opposition is that's the best time to get photographs of these planets. So look for Jupiter. On the 19th, it is at opposition. It'd be Sun, Earth, Jupiter, and it's a great time to get pictures of that. And then we're back to our Friday night show on August the 20th. You can find us on the Everyday Spacer Facebook page and the Everyday Spacer YouTube channel. We broadcast to both at once. Uh, so if you or someone you, you know has done something interesting involving space exploration science astronomy michael we've got to get you on here still talk about your zero g trip i i can't wait to hear more about that uh we would love to share our live with you uh in fact we do have a guest next week that's going to be august the 20th and louisa jenis is joining us and you're gonna you're not gonna believe where i found her i found her in a craft group on Facebook. And let me just read what she wrote there. I recently participated in a program through NASA where I got to work with the team to build a mock mission to deep space. We got to select different components for our mission given budget and weight constraints while also trying to meet scientific objectives. In addition to STEM uh, focused job, to a STEM focused job, I also got to design a banner with all the components we purchased and some wild cards we got through bad luck to tell the story of our mission. This is what I created. And she has a little video of that. I'm hoping we can share that next week. Uh, so she said, I sent it off today uh, to its new home at Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville. You don't have to be a scientist. You can do crafty stuff and still participate in space stuff. 
And we are talking to a few more people who are going to be our guests. We've got a couple scheduled. Chris Kent will be here from Earth Farms and Space Science. He's coming on August the 27th. Dr. Adam Dippert, also known as the Space Juggler, will be with us on September the 10th. And we have a few pending. Uh, Greg Allison, Tim Pickens, John uh, Keppel, Chelsea Good, and Don Dowdy so far. Uh, so I, I think we can hang around just a little bit if you have any questions. Talk to me about the idea for uh, Stump the Spacer. The uh, the concept being, you know, are, are we going to need our, the jobs we have here out in space? I bet we can figure out how to do every single one of them out there. And if not, then you stump the spacer. And the other on the other flip side of that is, you know, what are some jobs we'll need that don't exist on Earth now? Love to know if that's uh, appealing to you, if that's of any interest to you. I think it'd be a fun conversation. Uh, but that's just me, you know. <laughs> I could be just, you know, alone in that. If you think that would be kind of fun too, let us know. And if you have any questions, you want to be a guest, come on down. We are here for you. So uh, thanks so much. Anything else you want to add? I know it's hard. No. Okay. And I uh, really appreciate you folks being here tonight. Let's see who we had. We had, uh, oh, Lisa Shaver, someone new, Cliff, Tex. I saw Michael right before. Michael Taylor, Cliff Watson. And uh, really, really appreciate you folks being here with us. We just love to share our lives and we love to talk to you about all the cool things you can do involving space exploration, science, and astronomy. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend.